Greetings hobbyists, this is Artans of Vool. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at how we can set up the asset browser effectively for mechanical or more complex sets of objects. So if you haven't seen the asset browser before, it is effectively a set of objects that you can put into different groups and they're gonna allow you to drag things into a file really quickly and easily so you've got them to use without searching through old files to be able to copy and paste them in. It's a really helpful tool and if you haven't seen anything about it before, there's a video in the description so you can check that out. Likewise, there's also a video of how we made this piston. So so if you'd like to also create this then again feel free to have a look at that in the description of the video. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up so this works really well as an asset to just drag in and that's got some complications to it because there's several different objects here that we don't want to have to bring in separately. We want to bring them in in one go, but we also want to make sure that this is going to be able to come in a way that's going to be very usable very quickly to set up in our new scene. So let's go through what we're going to do with that. So the first thing we're going to do is sort out that some of these objects are going to need to be parented together. So before I do anything with this, what we're going to want to do is set this so that it's at the origin. That's because we're going to be doing something with constraints later. And I'm going to be honest, constraints hurt my brain a little bit as they can go wrong if you don't make sure they're set up properly. And you'll notice if you look at lots of videos on this, everyone always starts with their constraints in the center, the origin. So what I'm going to do is just forward slash to isolate this. And then we're just going to end, bring out the end panel and move everything to, well, at least on the zero for the X and Y. So let's do zero, zero for that and zero for that and then zero for that as well. So we've got everything there. And this is going to allow us to set up what I want to do with the constraints much more easily. We'll come to that in a little bit if you haven't used constraints before. But before that, the basic bits. The first, I want this to be rotating around its pivot point, which is, well, the center of this. So what I'm going to do is shift and S and then I'm going to bring my cursor to the selected object. So it's there. And then I can move this object's origin, which at the moment is here, not the pivot point, to that cursor. And that means now that when I rotate this around, it rotates from the correct place. Next thing we want to do is get these objects parented to this one. So we only have to use this one object. So I'm going to click, shift click, and then shift click the object I want to parent to last. Control and P and parent that, which now means that I can G or rotate with R this around. And those two other objects are going to be linked to it. Also, importantly here, it means that this now becomes one sort of object here. Here. So I've got the cylinder and then the other ones are linked together with it. I've just noticed it's out of the standard collection, but don't worry, we're going to be doing something with that anyway. We'll come to that when we get to it. The final bit is I want to limit the movement of this because, well, this being able to come out of the housing isn't going to be very useful. So what I want to do is say, no, stay in place in relation to this housing. And we do that using constraints. So I'm going to add a constraint and I'm going to add a limit to its location. And this is why I spent time moving everything to the zero point for the X and Y, because otherwise this gets, well, annoying, to be perfectly frank. So I want this to be limited in terms of its local space. I want it to be limited where it is, well, because it's parented in relation to this object. If I leave this as world space, then when I move this object around, whenever I copy it into places, it's going to be stuck at the origin, which is not what I want. Do we need to change this owner to the local space? Next, I'm going to limit this on the X axis and the Y axis. I don't want this going anywhere in relation to my object. So I can move this around and it's still locally the same because it's parented and this parenting is a really important part of it. Also, if I rotate it around, it's limited there as well. Again, locally. I also want to limit this on the Z axis, but instead of limiting it totally, I'm gonna to set up some constraints in terms of distance. There is one thing that's a bit annoying with this because notice we've got the minimum here and the maximum here, and that's actually the wrong way around in terms of the way it should look. If I just bring out the T panel and annotate this up, that way is positive, that way is negative. So that means this is the minimum, which is actually at the top, and this one is the max in this direction, which is actually at the bottom. So it's a little bit counterintuitive there. Um, yeah, just something to be aware of. So what I can do is I can set this minimum up here to be the minimum distance I want it to be able to go down. So I wanted to be able to go down, well, minus a bit. Let's just G and Z that down. Let's turn those off first. 
So G and Z, I want the limit of it moving down. We can see that here being minus 1.34, so about minus 1.3. So now I can't move it any further down. But I also want it limited in how far it can move up. And at the moment, if I press G, you can see I'm limited to it going to zero. You can see my origin won't go past that green line, which is zero. So let's move that slightly higher up. And you'll notice this will start moving because I've tried to move it previously further higher up. Actually, let's explain that. Let's put that back to zero. So at the moment, if I press G and move it down, you can see that I can move it down, but I'm limited to how far it will go down. Now, pay attention to the location over here. If I go down past minus 1.3, I can still carry on moving down and Blender thinks of this object as being minus 17 in location somewhere down here. So actually, if I press G and start moving up, I have to go all the way up until I get to 1.3 and then it starts moving up again. So do bear that in mind. So what I can do here is just press G and move it up to put this number as high as it can go, or at least higher than I want it to be. And then I can start moving this and it will show me how high I'm limiting it to. So I'm gonna to go to about there. So now I can move it between those two bounds. And if I, let's say, R this round, I can still only move it between those two bounds. So. A really nice quick way of limiting what you can do, let's put that rotation back to zero, without you then having to remember what the local axis is. Obviously you can just do this by pressing in this instance G and then ZZ to limit it to the Z axis, but then I've got to remember what the local axis is for this. So it's just something fun that we can do to limit this. Now at this point, I can actually just move this over here and this will still work because I set it up correctly on the origin. So yeah, at the moment I generally set this up at the origin point because it's easier and you're less likely to make mistakes. So now that we've got that done, what we want to do is turn this into an asset. So I'm just gonna drag this down. Then to be able to bring this all in in one go, we're gonna to need to turn this into a collection. So what I'm gonna do is select all of the objects. So making sure each one is selected. Don't just select over here and assume that it's selected the other ones as well because they're parented. So select the whole thing and then press M and we're gonna make a new collection. I'm just gonna call this, I don't know, piston for now. And then I can take this, right click and mark it as an asset. So notice we're marking the collection as an asset, not the individual parts. And if I drag out here, you can see we've got this in my asset browser and importantly, it has all the different parts to it. And if I want to, I can make something like, I don't know, let's call this catalog pistons because I'm gonna add more in here and I can go to all and drag that into my pistons assets. So there we go. And then make sure we file and save. Then at this point, I can open a new file and I can drag up or just make any extra window, change this into my asset browser and make sure I'm in my Blender assets. And at that point, we've got my piston and I can drag the piston in. And there we go, we've got the piston. But you'll notice in the object outliner, this is just a piston and I don't have the other bits and I can't click on anything individual. I either select everything or nothing and we don't want that that's not going to work so let's undo that the way we solve this is by dragging this in and in this box here we click the instance button so that it's off and now you'll notice I've brought this in and we've got my piston collection inside my main collection of the scene and we've got the different objects and what this means now is if I click on here and then down here we've kept our constraints and we've kept our parenting as well, so I can rotate this around and then move this to wherever it needs to be. So that little tick box is very, very important, otherwise this isn't gonna work. Now if I just delete these for one second and delete that collection, I will mention one other thing which I don't want you to get confused by. If I drag this in again and put the instancing back on, you can do something that generally works if you've got a lot of objects in one collection. You can press Control and A and make instances real, and that will do the same thing, but now these objects are all separated. You'll notice that here, it doesn't have that collection above it, and that means that you've lost all of your constraints and your parenting. So that's an easy way to do it as well, but then you'll lose that useful parenting and constraints. So hopefully that will make your workflow a bit more efficient and allow you to add some things into your objects that you're gonna be bringing into Blender using the Asset Browser. If you found that useful, please do hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow, and that's always really nice to see. 
If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, the bell button, so you know when I post new content. And if you really want to help support the channel, there is a Patreon page. And for a few dollars a month, you get these videos a week ahead of time, ad free and access to the Discord channel. So if you're interested in that, do head on over. Have a great day, guys.